all right youtube what's up man listen this is a i want to say a series but these videos i'm just sitting here talking about boxing or mma top 10 videos you know the, the hate runs deep series man i love doing these type of videos um i hope y'all enjoy this one it's my top 10 boxers this is my personal list of my top 10 boxers uh in, in 2021 listen alexander Usyk, not in here he no he vacated all his belts he ain't fought no real he fought comp but ain't no real combat heavyweight he's about to fight joshua so that's good but he ain't no fucking top 10 uh, sorry he ain't got no belts he was f former cruiserweight you undisputed right champion at, at not cru yeah at cruiserweight right or some shit like that listen he, he green magazine got him at top four he ain't on my list simple but anyway Hope y'all enjoy this, man. Let me know if y'all want more content like this. Let me know down below in the description, man. If you're new, man, hope you sub up. Let's get right into it, man. Hope y'all enjoy this, man. At number 10, I got Vasily Lomachenko. Lomachenko is 15 and 2. Now, while Ring Magazine does have him ranked at 8, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like it's disrespectful to the people that I have ahead of him that are champions in their respectable weight classes. So, I'm going to put Vasily at 10. I put him at 10 because he's just been so dominant at his weight class for so long. Um, and he lost to Tiafimo Lopez. I feel like he was kind of coasting, waiting on Tiafimo to gas. And that never happened. And he lost. Now, why that fight was in 2020, still, that, that was a Lomachenko look. He didn't look terrible. I mean, it wasn't the Lomachenko we know, but he looked good. Now, this being a 2021 list, Lomachenko just recently fought uh, Masayoshi Nakatina. He destroyed Nagatina. He just made Nagatina look like a baby. He was cradle, cradling. You know how Russell Westbrook be doing a baby? You know what I'm saying? For all my bas basketball fans, that's what he was doing with Nagatina. Um, Lomachenko fights Richard Kami uh, December 11th of this year at MSG. So we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure he's going to get the win. With that win, that should put him right back into title contention. I really, really hope he fights Devin Haney. Devin Haney is going to be fighting... I can't remember who Devin, Devin Haney is rumored to be fighting. I don't know. Y'all gonna have to let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, can't wait to see Lomachenko fighting again. And yeah, let's get on to number nine. All right, at number nine, a lot of y'all may know him. A lot of you may not. I'm, I'm assuming that's gonna be in the majority of many of you don't know him. Sorry if I'm butchering his name. Number nine is gonna be Gazuto Ayoka. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he fights at Super Flyweight. I believe he's the, the, the flyweight uh, champion and Super Flyweight champion, WBO and WBA. So he, this dude is a dog. He's 26 and two. Uh, his most recent loss was for the vacant WBO Super Flyweight title against Donnie, uh, Donnie Nasetis. I mean, listen, I'm trying to not butcher these names, but Donnie Nasetis. Um, now that that's actually the first fight I seen him, and he looked good. I actually thought he won that fight. He came back, he beat Aston, won the WBO Super Fightweight title. Um, his most recent fight was last year. Actually, he hasn't fought in almost. It's coming up on a year. He his last fight was against Kosoi Takanaka. Listen, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. It was against Kosoi Takanaka. TK Oldham in the eighth round. His next fight coming up is going to be next month, actually, September 1st in Japan. He's going to be defending his WBO Super Flyweight title against Francisco Rodriguez Jr. So, y'all be on the lookout for that fight. Um, Ayoka, man, very good footwork, lightning fast speed. When I say lightning fast, I mean lightning fast speed. But that that power that he packs behind that speed is just so beautiful, bro. The way his body, he has some very good body shots too, man. I, I suggest y'all check him out, bro. He, he, bro, this dude is a beast. He's a real good fighter. Um, looking forward to him fighting Francisco. Francisco is gonna be a tough fight for him. Can't wait to see that fight. But uh, yeah, Ayoka at number nine. Let's get into number eight. Coming in at number eight. Yes, number eight. We got Juan Estrada, man. Juan Estrada is a damn good boxer, bro. Juan Estrada is that, you know, that one foot in the tire, mano y mano, Mexican style boxer, beautiful chin, great power, great speed, you know, the, the, the classic Mexican boxer, bro, he's down and gritty, bro, he get that nitty gritty, bro, I love Juan Estrada, bro, he, he's 42 and 3, his most recent win was against Roman Gonzalez, which was a split decision that I thought Gonzalez won, you know, I hate to talk about that, though, uh, him and Gonzalez are going to be running it back in October, I believe. It's going to be for the WBA and Ring Magazine Super Flyweight titles. Now, he does fight in the same weight class as my boy who I had at number nine, Ioka. I want to see that fight, but 
nonetheless bro Juan Estrada is very well known in the boxing community man I love Juan Estrada so much bro for a super flyweight man this man is fucking active Juan Estrada is on a six fight win streak I feel like he doesn't get enough respect because he is not super flyweight which is saddening because bro, he's a damn good boxer but nonetheless man Juan Estrada number eight y'all gonna be surprised what I got it at number seven let's get into number seven Yes, y'all heard it right. At number seven, number seven, here we go. Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo is highly fucking disrespected. WBO, they, not WBO, Ring Magazine does not have him in the top ten. Jamel Charlo should be in the top ten. Now, he did lose to Tony Harrison by UD. We know that. But the fight that he just had with Brian Castano show me that he deserves to be in this top 10 i'm sorry he does he deserved to be in it before that like way before that he came back and beat the shit out of tony harrison ko'd him in the 11 round he, he needs to be in this damn top 10 this dude is an active fighter he's fighting the top of the top of the division he ain't in like canelo being a fucking diva oh i'm gonna go fight bivol uh, now i want to fight playing oh now i want to no he's fighting the best of the best bro he wanted to unify yes his like middleweight titles he wanted to go unify he did that, bro. You gotta give props to Jamel Chalo. Bro, the dude is 34 and one. Like I said, his only loss is to Tony Harrison, which he avenged. Brian Castano, and that Castano fight, he looked beautiful. Although I feel like he turned on the gas a little bit too late. He could have turned it on earlier in the earlier rounds. Maybe like round seven, he could have turned it on. Because he had Castano a few times hurt, but he wasn't just pushing forward until like the 10th, between the 10th and the 12th round. But nonetheless, Jamel Chalo at number seven. Can I wait to see him fight again, bro? J- Jamel Chalo, if y'all don't know, man, beautiful boxer, very technical. He has a lot of power, great speed, great technique. His footwork, though. I'm real big on footwork. Jamel Chalo's footwork is fucking beautiful. F- fantastic. I need y'all to go check out some Jamel Chalo highlights if y'all have not seen Jamel Chalo fight. Jamel Chalo at number seven. Let's get into number six. At number six. Yeah, a lot of y'all not gonna like this. Place. Number six, we got uh, Tiafimo Lopez. Now, Tiafimo Lopez, a lot of people, you know, will really put on notice in by Tiafimo Lopez. As far as like, now I won't say the casual boxer fan, but like boxer fans are like one for them, one for the out. When he fought Richard Kami, he KO'd Kami. Oh my goodness, that that was just a beautiful knockout. But anyway, he fought Vasily Lomachenko. He, he beat Lomachenko convincingly. He had the perfect game plan for Lomachenko. A lot of people thought Lomachenko was unbeatable. Thought he was the guy. People thought Lomachenko should have been number one pound for pound. And what did Tiafema go in there do? He neutralized Lomachenko and won the WBA, WBO, and the Ring Magazines. And he kept his IPF title. That that boy nice. That boy good. Uh, he's going to be fighting George Cambo- uh, Camboy. Cam- oh my goodness. I can never get that dude's name right. Y'all know who I'm talking about, though. He's fighting him October 17th. They keep pushing it back because this is a trailer card, I believe. They keep, fucking keep pushing it back. Uh, T.O. had, quote-unquote, COVID. They're going to be fighting for the WBA, IBF, WBO, and the World Ring Magazine title. So he's basically going to be defending his titles against George. Cannot wait to see that fight because George is no push George is a very good fight, but T.O. Fimo has power, has speed. But the one thing that I really love, and he's a young fur boxer. He has very good IQ. Tiafimo Lopez's IQ, his composure is very good. That's what I really like about him. He does get a lot of hate because of his dad and the trash talking this and that. Listen, I love him. I love the guy. I like him. I got him at number six. Let's get into our top five, y'all. All right, y'all. At number five, yes, number five, we have Josh Taylor. Now, as much as it pains me to say that, because he beat my favorite boxer, Regis Progre. The dude is the undisputed champion at uh, Junior Welterweight. I mean, the, the dude is a beast. A super well to Whatever the fuck you want to call it. Listen, um, I don't care about the fucking names. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He beat, just recently beat Jose Ramirez, bro, to become the undisputed a champion at 140 pounds. The dude is a beast. His forward pressure is fucking crazy. Body shots. His willingness to just walk forward through hits is crazy. Because Shri just hit him with some beautiful shots. So did Jose Ramirez. And he just continually walked him down. Waited, waited, waited. And just blasted jose ramirez and got him out of there to become the undisputed champion uh jose ramirez was was number one and he beat him uh while i do think he didn't beat regis because he i don't know i'm not gonna get into that but he did beat him the dude has some very good wins on his record i really don't have much more to say about josh taylor the dude is a damn good boxer he made me a fan when he fought regis uh but anyway man let's get into number four 
All right, y'all. Coming in at number four. I got about 30 dislikes already, so get the pitchforks ready. E. It's going to be Terrence Crawford. Now, you said he's 37 and no, he's the top of his division. No, he is not. The guy that is above him is at the top of the, uh, is at the, top of the welterweight division. Now, Terrence Crawford is a notorious switch hitter. I love uh, Terrence Crawford. Though. I really love his game. I really love his jab. His jab is beautiful, but... I- I'm really gonna harp on the way he switches stances. He does it so effortlessly, like it's like you don't even notice. It's like so smooth. It's like a smooth transition. It's like you know, a, a powder on on you know, powder on a donut. You know what I'm saying? The donut that you get out the pack, the powder donut. And that, that's how it is when you tap it, and then just effortlessly comes off. That's how Terrence Crawford switches. I'm sorry for hitting the mic. He last fought Kell Brook of and last year destroyed Kell Brook in the fourth round. Just absolutely <laughs> TKO him, and that was funny. But I think the fight that put a lot of casual fans on notice is when he fought Amir Khan. He destroyed Amir Khan. Now, while Terrence Crawford is only the WBO welterweight uh, champion, still though, the man is 37 and no, 37 have tried. And 37 have failed. The dude is a beast, though. I'm not gonna try to say shit on Terrence Crawford. Why I don't like him. Terrence Crawford is a damn good fighter. It's just that he doesn't fight the comp. All right, here we go, man. Number three. Y'all, y'all heard when I said I was talking about Terrence Crawford. Number three is gonna be Errol Spence. And the pitchforks have come out. Errol Spence, bro. Errol Spence is a damn good fighter. Listen, Errol Spence jab is crazy. The way he neutralized Danny Garcia. Off of his jab. Oh, this is off of an injury. Fucking Errol Smith Jr. He, the, I would say destroyed, but he fucking baby. He sunned Danny Garcia. That fight was in the end of last year in December, I believe. Now, uh, Errol Smith Jr. is 27 and 0. He's fought Sean Poy. He's fought Danny Garcia. He's fought Kel Brook, I believe. He's fought Chris Aguilera. He's fought Mikey Garcia. He's fought Lamont Peter. Bro, he's fought all these dudes, Alejandro uh, Barrera. He's fought all of these dudes, bro. And Terrence Crawford, if you look at his record, all right, he has American, Kel Brook, and I believe. I believe he has someone else. I can't. It's on the tip of my tongue. The dude that that uh, guy that got that bullshit decision over Manny Pacquiao. My boxing fans, let me know down below in the comments uh, section. Jeff Horn, Jeff Horn. That's what I'm talking about. But either than that, Terrence Terrence Crawford has nothing on Errol Spence. All right, y'all. Number two. Yes, number two. Now, I'm, my man. I'm a big fan of yours, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. All right. Number two, now I always debate who I'm gonna put at number two and number one. I always debate this every time when I wake up, when I'm like debating with myself looking at uh, you know records and shit. I always debate this, but number two, Naomi Inanu. I think I got that right. I, that's probably one of the first times I did that on a try. But Inanu, bro, dude is a monster. When I say he's a monster, he's a monster inside of my head. That boy, good. He's 21 and 0. He just fought uh Jason uh Mal- Maloney Malani. How you pronounce that? I believe that's his last fight. Uh, he retained the WBA, IBF, and Ring Magazine's titles. He fights at Bantamweight now. That boy is good. His by bro. If y'all ever seen this dude, he hits like a truck for Bantamweight. This dude hits like he he's a middleweight. This dude hits like a truck. I've never seen. I'm not gonna say I've never seen, but someone his like his stature, besides Manny Pacquiao, I would say someone that small with the amount of speed, IQ, and power that he possesses, that dude is very talented. He would be at number one if if the the dude that number one was never a boxer. He would be at number one, pound for pound, in my list of 2021, 2021. I don't know why it was a fucking pause in between that, but. The dude is fucking amazing. I, I really don't have much to say more about him. The dude is good. Like, that's all I have to say. Y'all should know who my number one is. Even though I don't like the dude, he's going to be at number one. And yes, at number one, like I said, I don't like the dude. But at number one, is going to be Mr. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Mr. Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez, excuse me. Man, Canelo, 